and welcome back to another exciting podcast episode of American Pylon. Your host here, Will Mehal, joined by the usual crew. Got James Thomas Fanning the fourth. Yeah, excited to be here. Tyler Wayne Combs. Hey, everybody. And David, the man Grayson, behind Ooh. all of the tech, making all of this possible. Producer Dave. His middle name's Lee. We're glad to be back. <laughs> really hasn't been much of a hiatus since last week, but a lot has happened and a lot for us to talk about and break down. But before we do all that, per usual, we need to thank our keynote sponsor, Ed Freeman State Farm. Ed has been a longtime listener and friend of the show. We've talked about him many times. He joined our counterparts up in Indianapolis. And as always, he remains the best State Farm agent in the known universe. So if you have a car, a boat, a home, or a life, be sure to check out Ed Freeman State Farm for all your insurance needs. Or the metaverse. That's that's new. Is he on the oh, metaverse yeah. now? He, he might be He's setting up shop. Metaverse. Digital shop. Might be a different, Is a storefront different person playing him in each universe, yeah. but he's there each time. That's a mover and a shaker, so it wouldn't surprise me if he's already on there. He should, has he sold NFTs yet for his agency? It would not surprise me, but I do not know. <laughs> awesome. So we've got a lot to talk about, a lot to address. Um, I kind of wanted to start by recapping or talking a little bit about what Georgia was going to be facing going into the national championship after a tough loss to Alabama in the SEC championship and what they were going to be facing uh, going forward. So obviously, you know, we know that the Georgia defense had, um, you know, a keynote year and really could probably be the best defense easily within the last decade. Um, You know, they had only given up just under seven points all season. And then... 6.9. 6.9 points. Uh, averaging. Yeah. Nice. And then they get rolled in the SEC championship, giving up 34 points in what became the 41-24 uh, loss to Alabama. So in your guys' mind, just taking a quick look back at that game, what were kind of the biggest errors that plagued the dogs in that SEC championship that they were really going to need to correct going forward? I think in the SEC championship, the story of the defense, it was just missed opportunities. I mean, there were multiple plays where the play was there for us to make, and then historically we've made that play um, <clears throat> all year. The fumble that was Nolan Smith or Nicobe Dean tried to pick up and didn't end up falling on. Mm-hmm. Nolan that, Smith. Yeah, that one comes to mind. Um, it was really, I mean, it was a 24-point second quarter, which obviously the – you can't discount any scoring drives because everything matters, but it really did get out of hand in the second quarter and then was that one deep shot to Jameson Williams early in the third, and then from there we started to clamp down quite a bit. So I think we said going into it um, that we needed to make them play our game, which is keep it low scoring, make them work for everything they get, and let us tire them out in the fourth quarter, um, which is not what we did in the sec championship it was letting them hit those chunk plays that we're not really capable of hitting because as much as i love stetson bennett he just wanted some natty he's not that kind of quarterback um and we i didn't feel like they were super capable of going 8 10 12 plays on us without making a mistake without running into a brick wall Um, but we weren't making them go that many plays in a row that would be my big takeaway from it yeah i mean it's really not much more to add to that. I agree. As far as well, first off, I want to start off by saying congratulations to the 2021 national champion Your Georgia Bulldogs, University of Georgia Bulldogs. So that's uh, that that was. I mean, what an exciting year! But yeah, that one blemish that obviously we're focused on right now and what we did differently. I think it was just execution, which I know sounds simple, but it was true. I mean, the defensive line. Well, I don't think we did that much different in the national championship. As schematically, we still played zone. We still had the same star in William Poole who got exposed. Um, we, had, we had all those same pieces coming back, but I think the defensive line just just got after him, brought Bryce Young down, got his, his face consistently. I mean, you saw the two interceptions he threw were terrible throws in the national championship, and we just did not see that at all when we played him in Atlanta. He just <clears throat> he had all day to throw. I think they really beat us up in the flats. I think early on they really stretched us and put our cornerbacks in a situation where – you didn't you didn't see him bring him down. They turned those small dink and dunks. I know Bolden that uh, their number eighteen. He just he seemed to tear us up. Obviously Williams with that big play to kick it off there. 
um, for their first touchdown. I think that was a pretty bad miss by Lewis Seen on that coverage, and they just rolled him. He got hit in the mouth again, seemingly from Alabama, and didn't really ever recover or respond to them to keep it competitive. And then, I, like Jimmy said, I think, you know, you give up those plays. You don't get to a quarterback like Bryce Young. You saw him create when he extended mm-hmm. the play. Um, we cannot respond to that. I think that's been kind of the frustration for Georgia. I think that's the next step we take as far as Kirby Smart recruiting and a development or developing of a coach is uh, having a quarterback where if you get in that kind of situation, you can get you can get into a boat race and not you know not have that scare you because Alabama was built for that. Alabama can win close games. They also have a quarterback like Bryce Young who's coming back, unfortunately, that can yeah. turn it on and you know stress your offense. So you got to be built to respond like that. Again, I don't think much change because we saw the same quarterback, same starting defense. I think the defensive line right there is really, I mean, kudos to those guys for just getting after him and forcing him to throw some horrible balls. And those intercept, those two interceptions were huge. Yeah. I think the Alabama offensive line also, they played out of their minds in the first game. Um, I don't yeah. know if part of that is just, you know, something to be said, I guess, for having your back against the wall and facing elimination. I don't, certainly don't think Georgia came in lackadaisical or anything, but I think there's a certain sense of urgency that you can't replicate that comes with knowing that you're one loss away from your season being over. Um, but I felt like the, whether it was our de- defensive line played with that sense of urgency, the second game yep. or their offensive line didn't just quite have that juice they had in the first game. That was another big. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Alab- I mean, credit to Alabama, right? I mean, they, you're right. That offensive line from what we saw the week before when they played against Auburn looked atrocious. I mean, they, yeah. were, they were terrible. Auburn, what did Auburn have? Seven sacks? Eight sacks? Something like that. We didn't get a single one. So credit to Alabama for who they are. Obviously, you know, Nick Saban is the greatest coach of all time in the college ranks. They responded. For now. And, and, <laughs> for now. I mean, and they they did what they did, obviously, in stymieing our defensive front. But uh, it's hard to beat a team twice. We see it all the time. And it's rare that you get to see a team twice, especially Alabama. Not many people want to do that. And look how we handled it. I mean, end up on the winning side four weeks later, three weeks later, 33-18. That's pretty damn convincing as far as a response. It wasn't like it was a grinded out game, but kind of put it away and put it to bed and was able to, yep. were able to enjoy those last <clears throat> few minutes of that game. So, um, One, one yeah. thing that's interesting, I think, is I've gone back and watched the Natty a couple times, and I just haven't bothered to go back and watch the SEC Championship because I don't like to rewatch How games that lose. Yeah. But uh, in the Natty one, one thing that – now we can get into this later, but um, I think Tyler and I have talked about a little bit. Like being in there, I think the energy was just so high and our defense was playing well and, and not allowing touchdowns and you know kind of playing really well in the red zone that it didn't register to me in the moment how – poorly our offense played in the first half and how Mm. there are several plays you could point to where Alabama didn't quite execute that it could have flipped the game on its head. But to be fair, those plays existed in the first game too. You know, there's plays that our guys did not make. There's passes that the Alabama guys could have dropped, but didn't. And, you know, a game can spiral quickly when one team is not quite executing and the other one is just playing really well. So that's one thing I've heard from Bama fans, which again, I'm getting ahead of us, but of, you know, oh, in the national championship, we had all these uncharacteristic mistakes. And if we hadn't made mistakes, we would have beat you. It's like, well, you made them. I don't know. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there are any places in life where you're allowed to say, well, if I hadn't made that mistake, then I would have had a better outcome. It's like, well, yeah, that's how, that's how life works. <laughs> Typically how these things work. Yeah, that didn't work last time I got a speeding ticket. So I don't know why it would work in the national championship. Yeah. So it sounds like there were kind of some common themes, right? Some sloppiness. Uh, and the secondary lack of pass rush in that SC championship game. Um, you know, after the win over Michigan, um, you know, were you guys, and let me just ask you, kind of what were your thoughts? Uh, obviously, it's exciting to get the opportunity to play that team again and, you know, kind of rewrite the record. As you mentioned, you don't get those opportunities a lot. Uh, I was kind of reading one of the parallels, um, and obviously this isn't the same thing, but when Georgia played Auburn, uh, back in, I think it was 2017, they ended mm-hmm. up getting their butt kicked by like 23 points. And then mm-hmm. they come back in the SEC championship rematch and end up beating them by 21. Mm-hmm. What were your expectations having seen the game, the SEC championship, some of the gaping holes that we needed to plug? What were you excited to see on the field from the dogs? And what were you nervous that they maybe, having seen the tide on the field, would be unable to overcome? 
I mean, I was excited because in a game of that magnitude, when you're trying to get that monkey off your back of 41 years, which was well documented and put in our face <laughs> all the time, every day for every big game. I mean, you lose that game. We, don't, we never hear the end of it, right? It was kind yeah. of a, and, and I think that's it. Not that that weight was on the players, um, but to me, it's in a game of that magnitude, just for the season and the year you're in, you've already, it's a common opponent. You've already seen them. You've done it. They played their best game. You got their best. And their best was good. Their best was good enough to really knock you around and win convincingly. Um, but going in, I mean, all you, it was. I know it's simple. I'm not trying to dumb it down, but it's go out there and play your game. You've seen it. You saw their best. You know how to improve. Um, we know how to slow them down. If we take away maybe Bryce Young's effectiveness, obviously they had some weapons go down. But, you know, we, we recruit, you recruit, you get depth, and you go. And you, the game unfolds like it does, and that's how – and that's how we were able to overcome and win. I mean, I credit to Kirby. Kirby went there and beat his mentor. Another thing that was, you know, well documented is Saban's only loss happened this year to an assistant in Jimbo Fisher. And then here again in the same, very same year with Kirby. I mean, I can't credit Kirby and them enough to just to, to fire them up the, um, and what am I trying to say there? Uh, conditioning seemed a lot better we didn't seem to get as worn out as much and we, like jimmy said our offense didn't do us any favors in indianapolis starting off those first three uh quarters were were pretty hard to watch just because it's almost the, it's, it's the reverse of the other games these first three quarters were not as hot but then we turned it up in the fourth quarter and were able to get the scores all the other times in alabama we've had a good first three quarters and then a collapse in the fourth quarter yeah so i mean all of that going into context and everything for kirby i just think um kudos to him obviously i mean he got that monkey off his back you're letting him recruit with a ring now and a championship trophy in our locker room which is uh huge i mean georgia to the moon as far as i'm concerned <laughs> yeah. after that one i was i was excited to see how our defense responded to that first loss just because that was so uncharacteristic and we were giving up those big chunk plays and alabama pretty much played perfectly because i tyler and i talked about it quite a bit going in is there's a big narrative of can Stetson Bennett win the national championship. And to me, it was never really about Stetson. It's like Stetson can manage a game and not put you in a bad spot. If you're not asking too much of him. if you're down two scores and you're asking him to throw to win against Alabama, I mean, I would have to say, no, the answer is he cannot do that, but you know, I mean, it's game 15, you know what you have going into that. So it's, can your defense keep you in the game and keep it low scoring enough, keep it enough of a slug fest so that you win and, you know, ugly Georgia fashion, not explosive Alabama fashion. It was just whoever was going to make the other team play their game was going to win. So I was excited yeah. to see our defense get another shot, and, and we saw them just play so well, especially in the red zone at the beginning. The fact that we were holding them to field goals, blocking field goals, not yep. allowing touchdowns in the first half. They, there's several plays where the game could have, you know, felt a lot more out of hand or a lot further away from being a close game than it was if – Bama had executed, and if our defense had not executed, there's a big, big difference between three points and seven points in a game that's six to nine at halftime. Absolutely. I think you're right. I mean, I remember in the game, I was very frustrated. We were all texting when we were there, and I was like, I just don't see a way for us to win. I don't see offensively what what do we flip on. I was, and I'll, I'll admit, I was like, we got to get JT Daniels because you have to stretch the field. You have to do something. We've seen this, like Jimmy just said. Game 15, you know what you got. It's not that Stetson Bennett couldn't win it. It was – can he give you that level? Can he elevate your level of play to get you there? And look at, I mean, look what the kid did. He came out after that fumble, the supposed fumble, which reviewing it, I, I do agree. I think it was a fumble, but you know, the crowd started booing. It kind of turned the tide of the, of the environment. It kind of yeah. got, kind of got negative. It also was kind of an angry negative energy, which was fun to be a part of, but it, it made me nervous of like, how are we going to respond? They score their only touchdown off of that, and we come back out, and the kid just starts slinging the ball. I mean, James Cook with the big run busted it open yep. with some belief. Stetson throws it down there to uh, A.D. Mitchell with that first touchdown. And, and it was almost like that was the catalyst that, that changed the team. They saw how, how close you were to losing the game or how, 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 how loose your grip is on a championship. When something like that happens, the game can turn so quickly. And it was almost like that, it was almost like that woke us up to flip the switch, to start scoring. And start saying, you know what? Let's, let's ball. There's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that could have happened, happened. I gave up turnover points. Now let's go play ball. You know, it's almost like that settling down and that the worst case scenario for Stetson in that situation, for him to turn it on and say, this is it. This, you know, I'm up against the wall and, you know, yeah, let's do the damn thing. Yeah, definitely an opportunity for redemption um, for the dogs coming to the national championship. I know we've kind of opened up the discussion about the game itself already, but I am interested to actually find out about your experience up in Indianapolis. 
Uh, you guys both made the trip up there. Talk a little bit about the trip itself, uh, when you guys got up there, what the plans were, all that kind of stuff. I'm interested to, to find out how the experience was. Yeah. I had a time, man. I loved it. Was it. Fun. I had a time. I, it, it was. I was high on life. Obviously, one. I'm still high on life. I just. I think back to that trip so fondly. Um, so, Tyler, who did you guys go up with? Uh, I went up. I went up by myself. I was going to go up with Jim. Some plans changed. I went up by myself. I had a couple of friend groups. Met up with uh, head sponsor uh, Ed Freeman State Farm and his family and a couple of friends from Macon in the middle of Georgia area. I hung up with them for a bit and just bounced around between the groups that I knew. But I uh, got in Sunday and just uh, went and saw Indianapolis, which was pretty fun. Be bopping around downtown, um, seeing all the dogs. It was. I mean, it felt like ninety ten Georgia <laughs> yeah. to Alabama fan. There was just dogs everywhere that's took awesome. over indianapolis indianapolis was fun i mean it's it's a good sports town i will say as far as uh sports. i don't even know where the, where lucas oil is in relation to anything in it's indianapolis. right downtown it's close to it's, everything yeah <laughs> it's you, where it is you walk out of a bar the only you know the only negative thing is it's cold right so when you walk out of the bar you or restaurant or whatever you're doing for entertainment you want to get to the where you're going next very quickly <laughs> so that's the thing i really you know offense anyone in indianapolis if you're listening but i don't understand the desire to ever live there because it's cold without the benefit of of skiing or anything like that effect. It's just a cold right. Midwest town. Uh, you know, it's not even like Chicago, it's, right? Yeah. Chicago's freezing, but Chicago's it, I mean, rich in history. Just a lot city. fun, a destination, a lot of opportunity. Not I hear to, that. Not to say uh, Indianapolis is valueless. Obviously, it was a good sports <laughs> town, <clears throat> but um, it's where our memories are, right? It's where our championship happened, and that's fine. It was a really good stadium. I actually enjoyed Lucas yeah. Oil. <clears throat> I was impressed with the stadium, but I, I got in Sunday. Also, actually flew through Louisville to visit Adag, friend of the show. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. Um, yeah, so when Kelly decided she wanted to come, um, so I... So you and Kelly flew up together? We flew up together. I had us flights to Indianapolis, and I forgot to add her as a companion <laughs> to mine, so it was my fault. So we flew into Louisville <laughs> instead. Um, that ended up being great, though. I got to see Adag and Katie, and then it was like a two-hour drive. It was pretty easy. Tyler got free rides everywhere the whole weekend. It was, it was great. great. I had a weekend. It was nice. <laughs> Wait, so you flew into Louisville, rented a car, and then drove and up? And then drove. It's like two nice. hours. And then just out of that, Tyler got a free ride to lunch mm-hmm. the day of the Natty and then mm-hmm. uh, the airport the day after. So yeah. that worked out. Tyler played that pretty well. Yeah. Oh, man. I started it off with, because uh, I don't hold the car, the credit cards that Jimmy does to get you access to certain lounges. So I guess mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm balling out. I did the Delta Lounge there and back, uh, which was great on the way back. The Indianapolis airport had all their TV. The Delta Sky Lounge had all the TVs on the replay of the championship game. And it was nothing but dog fans everywhere. <laughs> the Delta Sky Lounge in Indianapolis is red and black, just hooting and hollering. The party kept going. Yeah. I, I couldn't fun. imagine being an Alabama flan- fan yeah. on those flights back just because it was heavy Georgia. I don't know. I mean, th- there were definitely mm-hmm. Alabama fans in the stadium. I don't know if a bunch of Georgia fans – made the trip without tickets or if Alabama fans have been to so many natties, they'd like don't go out and enjoy the city. So they were just there for the game or what, but yeah. in the bars, I agree with Tyler. It felt like 90% Georgia hmm. um, in the stadium. It was like 70, 30, but yeah. we, we went, we both went to that thing Sunday night. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, the, yeah. That was fun. Shout out to dog days. Yeah. Um, we've done a few of their events for other away games and that was fun. They did this, they put on this event last minute. Um, it was at the skyline lounge, I think, which was very cool at night. It was a, I think it was the tallest or second tallest building in Indianapolis, and it was just like kind of 360 or 180 view of uh, all of Indy, which is pretty cool. It was it was yeah. it was it was done well. They had a DJ and drinks and all that stuff. And it was all dogs fans, so it was just it was fun. Like everyone was there. I felt like so it was uh, it was just great. I mean, from from the, from the flights up, everyone was calling the dogs. That's awesome. Um, even the flight is, the, the flight attendants and the pilot I mean, on, on the way back. I thought it was so great that our pilot was like, welcome home. Uh, we get to enter Georgia airspace, uh, home of your 2021 national champion Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, it was. People started barking and stuff. It was yeah, awesome. It was, cool, yeah. it was just, <clears throat> it was such a fun trip. And I, and I, and I think Jimmy's right. I think there's probably some uh, some national championship fatigue on Bama's end, which is fine. You know, you, I mean, that's a good problem to have. They're spoiled. <laughs> it's, they're, they're a dynasty. I'm not sure anyone will ever uh, supplant them or, or – repeat that kind of run that they're on uh but man what a just what a special moment to be a part of and to see it and do it and then have all your friends up there and i mean everyone was, was a friend fun. everybody was a friend everyone you saw you were just man this is the year it feels like it it's got to be this year you know how can it not be and uh just cool to see another city and uh and yeah just what a what a special event yeah it was a lot of fun and then i think to tyler's point the it was set up really well for it being like seven degrees i never felt like we were outside for longer than we needed to be ever really? five, six minutes walking between places, getting into the stadium was nothing. I mean, 
anybody that went to the game in 2017 remembers how, what a just clustered the security yes. was and so yes. it was terrible. And so getting in here was no problem at all. We didn't have to wait at all. No lines for a bathroom, no lines mm-hmm. for concessions or a beer or yeah. anything like that. Do they have uh, mask mandates no. in the stadium? No. No, <laughs> no okay. not at all. No mask anywhere, which is great. Where I mean, it, well, it left, excuse me, it left it up to your choice. You know, which I'm not saying it's great to not. I'm just saying it's in the sense of, hey, do, you know, come as you are if you want to. You know we're here. And, yeah, uh, they didn't have any sort of... Uh, so I went to a Raiders game earlier this year, mm. and they had a thing where you had to show yeah you had something like QR code where you validate your your um, vaccine status. I know Eric was trying to do it outside of the stadium, and he couldn't get data on his phone, mm. and it wouldn't. He's like, I literally have a picture of my vaccine card, and, and they wouldn't let him in. Security guy was like, I need this little QR code that it gives you by recognizing your eyeballs. It's connected to Clear, like you yep. the uh. I don't know, it was a mess, but <clears throat> he eventually got in the stadium. Um, but at this one, it was it was just you know their their recommendation was a mask if you're not vaccinated. But there was no anything involved in that. Mm. Okay. So where were you guys sitting? Where were your seats? We we sat in different seats. I sat in the end zone. I actually sat um, behind Stuart Howe. Really? College. Yeah. Did you know that he was going to be there, or was just like podcast. totally random? No, I just bumped into him. I, I hadn't seen him probably since the last national championship. Honestly, oh, you know, last time I saw him was in uh, Baton Rouge. I think when we were at LSU back when Joe Burrow was. <laughs> Before he was Joe Burrow, but yeah. he was Joe Burrow that day. That was the first day he was ever Joe Burrow. Um, and we went and saw him <clears throat> in, uh, in Baton Rouge. Yep, he actually played terrible that game. I went back and looked. What's who played terrible? Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow did. He had like uh, 130 yards and like 50 percent completion. He oh. actually did terrible. They just converted all those damn fourth downs. Yeah, and we also faked a field goal at, at fourth and nine and asked yeah. Rodrigo Blankenship, who I met at the at the. I saw that before, picture. Uh, yeah. so you just uh, bumped into. Him we had a point there. to this story from Sorry. three years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. To touch on that, though, I guess. Uh, well, I yeah, we sat in different places. I got very lucky, very generous. Um, a buddy of mine, Miles Flynn, um, who is actually <laughs> engaged to ATO brother of y'all's, uh, Ben Fogel, um, hooked me up with... He is engaged to Ben Fogel's sister. See what did I just say? Engaged he to Ben Fogel? He said he was Fogel. engaged. Yeah, engaged. Yeah. <laughs> sorry for the... I, I know. Sorry, sorry for embarrassing any of you guys about this story. <laughs> uh, yes, he's engaged to Ben Fogel's sister. And then Derek Duffy was also in the same sexual image. So it was awesome. I was like, That's I should have awesome. like, all these guys from Athens that I knew back in the day just through you guys, through ATO. Yeah. I mean, literally, <clears> everywhere <throat> you looked, it was just someone you knew, a friend of yours. It was it was excellent. It was, it was a great time. But uh, yeah, I sat there. I... Uh, I'll go ahead and say I snuck into the McGill Society tailgate, um, which is kind of the, the donor people for UGA and uh, <laughs> the rich folk, the friends we were with. Um, they were actually went to church with Rodrigo Blankenship and his uh, now fiance when um, he was in the when he was in the Atlanta area. He went to Sprayberry High School, so um, they knew him growing up. So they had him come over and just talk to us. And I was like, "Hey, Rodrigo, do you mind? I know it's annoying, but." Uh, I'd love to get a picture with you, just you know, once in a lifetime. He was like, "Sure." Um, funny enough. He, uh, little, little nuance, I tried to tag him in it, and he, I guess he knew he was going to get blown up, so he turned off all tagging capability. I mean, so little heads up for all you famous folks out there. You can actually oh. temporarily disable a tag. Like I would, you, yeah. you type his name in, but I need said, to look into that. Th- this user, yeah, it happens to me all the time. Um, I guess I know that was an <laughs> option, so thanks, Rodrigo, for putting that on my so radar. So this user has removed the tagging the Tagging option. option, yeah. And then uh, I was going to, oh, also, because so, uh, David and I, producer David and I kicked in high school, so I had some pictures of, uh, of kicking just because that's where I peaked athletically. So I was like, hey, Rodrigo, I also had a bit of liquid courage. I was like, hey, can you uh, scale off one to ten, kind of like Gordon Ramsay, people on Twitter ask him, can you can you rate my cooking? I said, you know, can you rate my uh, my form, kicking. kicking form? And he goes, look, he said, that ain't, that ain't it. I was like, well, you know. That <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, that, he said, that is not it. You He's know, like, so what are you doing now? Something of a kicker yeah. myself. <laughs> I'm a desk monkey now. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it, it was a that, that was a fun time, and uh, he called the dogs at that tailgate and everything. So that that was that was fun, dude. But, that's um, awesome. But I mean, literally, it's just like everywhere you looked, it was just whether well, there was people from UGA, people from Athens, people from Atlanta. You knew my friends from Middle Georgia. Um, everywhere you looked, it just yeah, it was, was fun. Someone you knew, the who's who, or just anyone associated with Georgia seemed to have been there if they could make it up. I know, mm-hmm. obviously, not everyone could. But um, we we even met fun. some people the Friday night before just through friends of friends that we went to dinner with, and this guy named Mo, and I was talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to Indy. We should meet up and stuff." There, we just kind of bumped into him. So, dang, that's it's crazy. Funny. It's one of those. I, it seems like the bars they had were were very big, and it'd be like being at the Battery, I guess. Mm, it'd be like okay. y- there there were only so many. <clears throat> excuse me, that we tried to go to, so you ended up seeing kind of everybody 
in town at those bars. That's okay. how it felt like to me. I'm sure there were people there that I didn't see, but that's it really felt like cool. We, just like Tyler said, you walk around one of those bars and you're just seeing people left and right. That oh, it was great. Uh, friends, right, into, friends. right into the SEC shorts crew too, which was awesome. Oh, that's cool. It was awesome. Uh, Hope. Uh, oh, I think you I, sent me something. Yeah, I can't. I don't know her name, um, but follow Hope. them on. Uh, yeah, well, she plays the Hope character in SEC shorts, and they, they they were such a good sport. They were like, "Y'all want pictures with us?" They would take the pictures for us. Like the whole crew was there. The guy who plays Georgia usually. Um, they were fun. They 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 were a good time. It was just funny to see them. Uh, uh, be there too. It, literally, and look, I know I keep repeating myself, but anyone who was like anyone you've seen anything to do with a production of football, they were there. Dang, and, uh, that was fun. That's it, awesome. Yeah, so. yeah. I know. I was really happy that you guys were able to make it up, and many of our friends were. Um, producer Dave and I, and longtime listener in front of the podcast, Brent Johnson, came over to the house, and we were hanging out watching the game there. It had been dry January. Uh, until <laughs> we got a bunch of frauds here yeah. until about three hours that was not a prior, dry prior to the game. Hours. And I decided I, I was incapable of going through that sober. So, but yeah, no, it was a tremendous time. Uh, obviously I was really happy that you guys were able to go up there and, uh, you know, thanks for sharing all of the, the exploits. What was, <laughs> yeah. so what was y'all's feeling watching it? Cause it, to touch on what I said earlier, I wa- rewatched it probably the like Thursday, Friday after. And I was watching, I was like, Oh my God, our offense, like this is ugly. I knew we were going to win the game and I was stressed out watching the replay, how poorly our offense was playing up until the fourth quarter. It was explosion. scary. It was scary. Yeah. Um, you know, I just remember thinking like, I don't know. I don't know that Stetson can get this done mm-hmm. and our defense was playing well, but I just didn't know that we, that we had a path, and then obviously through past experience, I was afraid of another heartbreak. Yeah, and that's really what I was um, didn't think I could live through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, the secret was uh, Will started doing dishes, and we started doing pretty good. So that's right. I heard about that. keep yeah. doing dishes the whole time. I was getting uh, stressed out. I had to get up and move around and, and watch the game from the kitchen, and so I got up to start kind of cleaning things up just to occupy my my mind. And uh, as soon as I started doing that, things started to turn a little bit of a corner. I yeah. said, well, I'm just going to clean the shit out of this house because <laughs> apparently that's what's working. Will was out there on those baseboards, baby. Just Dude, I, getting I was getting after yeah. it. We were, we were watching the uh, Titans playoff game this weekend. Obviously not the same outcome. I guess I only got Braves Georgia this year. So two out of three is not too bad. But when we were at the bar awesome. we were watching it at, Kelly had this like a uh, Titans Mardi Gras necklace on. Mm-hmm. I, I bought it with, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were down in New Orleans for the LSU game, the LSU game, yep. And uh, she figured out that she was like rubbing it with her thumb, and the Titans were playing better when she was rubbing it. It's got like a rough edge, and I was like, "I want your thumb bleeding! Like, do not <laughs> stop rubbing that. Do what you got to do for your team." Yeah, right? but she, even she couldn't overcome the Joe Burrow magic. And yeah, I'm, I, I'm rooting for Cincinnati. He has a way of that. doing that. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah, that tailgate was fun though. Yeah, tailgate was a ton of fun. I mean, New Orleans was fun, and going back again to three years ago. Oh, 2019, <laughs> yeah. Covering a lot of ground here. Yeah. Oh, no, that was 2018. It was 2018. It was 2018, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I, I agree with you, Will. I mean, I, I remember I was very negative. I was very negative uh, the first half. It's hard not to be. I think, I, I think that's fair. I think that's um, honest as far as not being a believer of those first, you know, two and a half quarters, honestly. Um, because that, that first sack, the first play of the game, that sack, you know, they, they drove down the field fairly easy after their overturned fumble call, mm-hmm. kicked the field goal. Then we come out, so it takes that 14 yard sack. It was like, oh my gosh, here we go. I guess I didn't see a way. I did not. I was like, what are we going like, to do? Like, what, we have everybody out there. We have Bowers. We have Pickens. We have our weapons. We have everyone that's brought us here and that we can rely on that we know what we have and we're not performing. It's not kicking off and uh, i remember just being so down and frustrated and i was like here we go but i remember jimmy saying this i think at halftime it was um six, six to nine a uh, nice score but bama was winning um, which wasn't so nice but uh that, that plays into our strength that was more of our game right we wanted to be in that low scoring game so it gives you something to potentially figure out if you're in a boat race with bama if they're down 24 10 24 7 you're not going to overcome a Bryce Young team like that. I think also yeah. looking back at the box score, I even forget the kid threw it 57 times. They like, they totally got away from uh, even wow. you know they're playing a close game. They're up. I understand you know we still have a good defense. We're shutting them down. But uh, you're you're ask if you ask any quarterback to throw it 57 times, you're yeah. <laughs> I don't care. That's sexy for offense. I understand for numbers wise, but you're that's usually not a 
recipe for success if you're doing anything that heavy, whether it be the option offense and you're running the ball every single play or you're passing the ball almost 60 times in a game, you're oftentimes not in a position, if that's the case, to, you know, to do something consistently or, or to, be, to be balanced enough to win a game. Um, so that, that, that was a bigger, the bigger change, but, uh, but I agree with you. I mean, watching the game early on, it was just, can I wash dishes? What can, do I need to buy more beer? Do I need to switch what beer what I'm drinking? Yeah. Do yeah. I need to change my seat? What can I do? You know, what can I do to get the, to get the dogs going? But man, I'm telling you, I know we've all watched it. I've watched that play literally every day since the game ended, but the Kelly Ringo interception, I mean, I just, the, the emotion that went off in that building. I've never been a part of something so electric in my life when that happened. That was, you want to talk about that? That was, I mean, I lost yeah. my voice. I was going out of my mind. I was hugging people I didn't know. I was like three rows down from falling over stairs and stuff. I, did, I mean, it was, it was wild. It was just, it was bedlam. It was chaos. It was, it. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, the only situation I've been in that was similar to that energy-wise was probably in 2012 when we played Bam when Alec Ogletree blocked a field goal and ran oh, back for yeah. a touchdown. Yeah. That was like that, which ultimately we didn't win that game, so it was nice to be part of a high-energy play like that where um, we were on the winning side of it. I think for me, the the part where I really started to believe, it was definitely still very much in doubt, but it was James Cook's 67-yard yeah, run. Yeah, 100%. That was, that was where it was like, okay, our offense has a little bit of a spark. Well, baby Dalvin Cook running down, and then I think it was Zamir punched it in from there. It was that that uh, drive. And then from there, it was just all Georgia. I don't yeah. know what it was, but that was de- definitely the, the Ringo pick six was the one where you knew it was over and you started to – breathe going into that we were up eight they were the defense was playing well i felt good not great but i've felt great against bama before in games that we didn't ultimately exactly. win. exactly so, yeah but i think that's the way uh, to put it i mean you, you most people don't feel great playing bama at all and mm-hmm. we're this odd anomaly of people have seen us play bama extremely well and own the game for the majority of it and not come out on top and here we are not necessarily owning the game, but just they had no answer. Also, I mean, six, nine, six to nine, nine to six at halftime is not in control of the game as far as getting done what you want done for a Heisman Trophy win. Let's, I mean, let's not forget he just won the Heisman Trophy two weeks earlier, right? Yeah. I mean, Jamison Williams, electric. I mean, I know they don't have, I know they don't have Mechie, you know, but again, we don't have a thousand yard receiver or a thousand yard rusher. We got, and we just do what we do we play with what we have it's you know by committee and cover you know pick your poison who's it going to be that day you know rock bauer showed up darnell washington showed up stetson bennett my goodness i mean he, he did what he had to do i mean but what was i think in the fourth quarter he was four for four for 84 yards and two touchdowns like yeah. he just i just i loved i remember that because i just been green in my brain just of how like efficient he was when the light when, when it came on and it mattered the most the kid did what probably none of us can do. I know everyone likes a dog Stetson for the lack of arm or, or height or athleticism or whatever it may be, but biggest game ever. Yeah. Flipped it on and played the absolute a throw to 80 Mitchell out of it. The biggest yeah. throw of his life. That was, that was, I, I, that honestly, was like a big play. Too. I think that play is so overlooked. I mean, yeah. the James Cook throw gave us belief. I remember that. I remember that was like, okay, this is it. Like, here we go. Here's a click. Here's, you know, here's a chink in the armor. Here we're going to go. And uh, kind of start moving the ball and have some have some momentum, but that AD Mitchell catch, man. I mean, that's the thing. Another part, I guess, the thing of that AD Mitchell, Kelly Ringo, Brock Bowers, who else scored? Zeus and Zeus. So three of the four scores are sophomores or younger, or retro freshmen or younger. Yeah, huge. I mean, you don't. That's that's incredible. Those guys you know, are all coming I know, back. I know Bama <clears throat> young, but everyone who had an impact play for us does come back. Uh, except for Christmas interception, I guess, and then James Cook's largest throw. So, but for the majority of it, um, Chris just, Smith just is incredible. Back, isn't he? I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Yeah, Christmas coming. We can even back. touch on that stuff, I guess, if y'all want to. I don't know what kind of time we got with producer Dave over there, but, um, but yeah. No, I mean it's it's funny. I mean, 2021 was incredible, right? Every game with that one blemish, the Orange Bowl victory over Michigan, which just felt comfortable as can be. I mean, because I had a sour mm-hmm. taste in my mouth after Atlanta. Yeah. After that game, I mean, I was. I wasn't done with Georgia football because I knew there was more to be earned or more to be gained on the season. But my gosh, I just hated that layover. Yeah, I I tried to not get <clears throat> too too excited about the Orange Bowl. Like obviously, I was going to watch it. We were down in Miami with some friends who were visiting uh, Brian and Nikki, and we were at uh, the Georgia Alumni Bar of Miami, mm-hmm. I guess. And I was just trying to go into that, being like, okay, as poor as we looked against. Alabama, I don't want a loss here to ruin my New Year's, you know? Right. Yeah. And 100%. so um, 
And then it didn't matter because we looked amazing against yeah. Michigan. Oh, that, was, that very first drive came out, and I was like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy. That was fun. Yeah. Well, I think that goes back to shoving. We positioned ourselves to win all those games. You don't want to lose to Bama. I mean, it was up to us to knock them out, not even give them a chance. It's still fun to get that monkey off your back on the big one. Yeah. Like, ultimately, we weren't SEC champions. I think that's okay. No one's crying you know, over that spilled milk. But um, it's just funny to see that one off week, and everybody has one. And we're just lucky enough that we were that good of a team to where our off week could be your conference championship. But then we looked so good for the first 12 weeks before that that it didn't even matter. Yeah. You can argue the first 11 weeks because Clemson was a close game and no one knows who's who in week one. But you lose to Bama like that. But you've done such a good job in the season that you're just guaranteed, regardless of outcome, to get into that game. Um, and then to play Michigan and go to the Orange Bowl and be like, wow, that's easy. I remember Ed. It, uh, Ed Freeman State Forum was at the game, and he even said it was actually a very boring game. While we won, and it meant a lot, and it meant that we can keep going and get that one more game, he's like, they ne- Michigan never had anything to cheer for. Yeah. So the stadium itself was like us expecting kind of what we think should happen, but being a bit cautious, so yeah. not being absolutely wild about it. But at the same time, you're, there's no one there giving you anything kind of feedback. Yeah. Any kind of like gritty you know, fan interaction because they – Scored 11 points. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a Michigan fan of that game, you're like, well, at least we're in Miami. I yeah. live in, <laughs> Which now that I've I been, live in Michigan, Jim, so this now, sucks. Jim, you, <laughs> you were in Georgia, at least you were in the town that Georgia played in so frequently, I feel like, because you were in Atlanta when we played it. At least, you didn't go to the game, I know, but you were in Atlanta when we played the championship game. No, I was actually in Vegas for oh, the championship game, 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 but I was in thing. Miami. It was funny that we were in Miami. You were in Miami? The Orange Bowl. We looked at getting tickets and then. We were like, oh, the, the not everybody we're with were Georgia fans. Ed will be the first to tell you that that stadium is a big nothing burger of a mm-hmm. stadium. I think he celebrated midnight 2022 in an Uber on I-65 or 95 or whatever road that is. Um, so Ed went to that game? Ed was mm-hmm. at the yeah. game, but he said there's just like you couldn't get an Uber out of there. It's right. It's in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. You can it's see it from lot. the interstate in between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Um, but, yeah, then but yeah, the, we were – I got to go to – so I was in Miami for that game at the Natty and then went to, f- I think, four mm. other Georgia games. Yeah. No, you did it so all. It was a good I feel year. like you did all the away games. That was a good year, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Go back to Lucas Oil. Like, I enjoyed Lucas Oil. I hear about that about Miami. We're very blessed here in Atlanta with all of our new sports, uh, with, with the battery, with how it's set up, with everything that's been uh, – Oh, yeah, shout out Braves. Shout, world champion. Braves oh, won the yeah. World Series, I mean, too. Hell, yeah. I mean, how can we have Atlanta <laughs> Braves? Um, I mean, what, what a, literally what a year in this in this city. In it's this unbelievable. State. I mean, especially being in Atlanta. I know we all live in Atlanta, down the road from from Athens. But let me just – I remember being so tired during that week also, speaking of the Braves. I mean, just like every night, everybody just at work was staying up and watching these games, yeah. watching the World Series games, and just showing up to work and like just exhausted. Yeah. Trying to like wheel themselves to, to like <laughs> – that the was I remember when we when we went into game what game six I guess we went in six mm-hmm. we went in five yes we went in five. five yeah we went into game five I was like please God let the Braves win tonight like I'm so tired of staying up to watch baseball until midnight <laughs> <laughs> I just we know the Braves are going to win at this mm-hmm. point we're not going to blow a three one lead because we broke that curse in the uh, NLCS but. I, I was just like, I'm just ready to be done yeah. watching. I want to watch a parade. I don't want to watch any more baseball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was and Jorge Soler was like, okay, I got you, Jimmy. That so was, that yeah, was, that was exciting too, though, man. Like high energy, just wherever you were at that game or for watching that game. I mean, it was just this. I mean, we, we, we've been very blessed to do, enjoy all of this. You know, it was like, I know Boston yeah, is kind of the same. Boston's always has, you know, whether it's the Bruins or the Celtics or the Patriots or, or the Red or Sox the Red Sox whatever the hell else they got every other wins yeah. they all seem to look out Boston this Atlanta's state, title town, town. Title town. Yeah. yeah yeah, it's fun and um, and yeah I mean get me what, what a year to party yeah what a fun time that's been fun nice. but just to touch on real quick if we're okay time wise I guess we started to talk about uh, next year David's shrugging at me he doesn't care okay. yeah I was uh, actually going to bring that up what, what comes up next for the dogs what, what are we looking at going forward so a lot yeah i mean we're, we're not going anywhere we've we've got a really really strong secondary class coming in this is this is gonna be a whole episode we're returning a, a lot of talent um pretty much everywhere i don't think the defense will be quite as good i think the offense will be quite a bit better mm-hmm. stetson bennett is who he is so we'll see but i think we'll he'll just have a lot more weapons to work with and i think really good wide receivers that are healthy can make an average quarterback look better than he is or an above average quarterback look great or, you know, whatever you want to call Stetson Bennett, 
elevate that one thing. And I think the offensive line and wide receivers next year can do that. I think we take a slight step back on defense, but our secondary is going to be extremely young and extremely talented. So if we can survive Oregon, we got a whole year Mm -hmm. to figure it out. Um, Bama does terrify me next year. Yes. I will say that. 100%. <laughs> I think Bama is going to be extremely good and extremely pissed off next year. Mm-hmm. We don't have them in the regular season. Um, <clears throat> obviously never wish injury on any player ever. I will say that a lot of their scariness is built around, uh, Will, a- will Anderson, yep. his name? Will yep. Anderson and Bryce Young coming back. Yep. And we saw with, you know, Pickens, Tyke Smith, um, which is the offensive lineman that got hurt against Clemson. Uh, um, c- cornerback. Tyke. No, well, not Tyke. The the um, oh Tate Ratledge. Tate Ratledge. That mm-hmm. you're always one play away from you know a key player being out for the season. So mm-hmm. that's why you play the game. But if everything plays out with people staying relatively healthy as the depth charts for next year are, I think that um, Bama is pretty scary. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'd be again, my early pick for next year's hundred percent. Like Jimmy said, I think it's, it, that's a whole. Um, show um, t- to do just uh, the names and the who and the what and who fits in and where do you feel I think overall defensively uh, weak up the middle um, with the exception of Jalen Carter being there uh, or could be could be there but weak up the middle uh, offensively I agree I think we take a step forward so so far as Todd Munkin the offensive coordinator comes back I think uh, it's exciting I know Stetson complicates things I know we're forever grateful for Stetson I think if he would have left I think it would have made things easier as far as you know where you're going and who your competition is but you know again I think it's invaluable to have someone like that <clears throat> on your on your team I mean you, you go into the week one is versus Oregon it's gonna be the versus Dan Lanning our XDC the Dan Lanning Oregon Ducks is our new head coach. Uh, that games we played in Atlanta. So we kick it off right so just like this year. Like we played Clemson at a neutral site in uh, Charlotte. This next coming up season 2022, yeah. we play Oregon in neutral site. And then, like Jimmy said, I really think we have enough returning. Obviously, we're our recruiting is well documented and who Kirby is and what he does and where his bread and butter is. Um, I foresee us, quite honestly, I'm going to get ahead of myself here, undefeated regular season. See Alabama again, and I'm with Jimmy. I think that just is an absolute buzzsaw. I mean, they're just that was the youngest team Saban's ever had. Yeah, I just don't see anyone touching them next year. But uh, if all we can do, all we can ask is to be in the same position, play well enough, yeah, get in the playoffs with maybe with one slip up, maybe a miracle happens and we don't have a slip up. But uh, well, that's what I was talking yeah. to my dad about earlier today. He was like, I, you know, I was looking at Bama next year and they're going to be good. And I said, well, the good news is we don't play them in the regular season, so. If we go undefeated again, we could be in a position to, you know, win or lose, still go to the playoffs, and then, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what happens in Los Angeles. I believe is Did, where the uh, national so, champions. So far, so far, yeah, it's in California, right? Yep. Did y'all watch the um, Good Morning America interview? Yeah, yes. with Stetson. <laughs> Afterwards, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I haven't uh, been able to make myself watch it because when it first happened, I was like, I, I can't, I can't watch this embarrassment because there were so many comments, mm-hmm. but. Uh, the picture on this website that I'm looking yeah. at, yeah, is, is this where he's like absolutely faded? <laughs> yeah, he's still so drunk from the night before. Like they ask him if he slept any, and he's like, couple, couple, couple hours. minutes. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, I, I can't even. Really. I can't even imagine giving an interview no. on national no. TV. And that's, I mean, I, he held I himself together pretty yeah, good. He did. So I can't really imagine being him. He yeah. played the game. I just drank during the game, okay, and cheered. And I was knocked out for like two or three days afterwards. He caught up yeah. to you uh, based on this picture. I mean, he probably did. He had access to God knows what else that I didn't have access to. As far as I saw, I saw the picture on Instagram. He was chugging Pappy or taking a pool of Pappy. Yeah, it was from, like that 23 right from Pappy. the bottle. I don't think I had any idea what yeah, I was drinking. I'm not touching. Him. I can't, you know, I have no access to anything like this. But, uh, uh, yeah, that, that kid. I mean, I, I thought I saw the interview too. He's um, stuck his foot in his mouth a little bit, which putting it in a little bit of gray area as far as what he's going to do. But Stetson Bennett is returning, which I think is I think that's huge. I think going in playing a team like Oregon and getting those first few games under your belt. Um, why not have someone who has not been on a bigger stage and has been undervalued more and just talked down about more? Um, to just carry that on into the next season until yeah. what you hope you can upgrade, obviously. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited. Also see well, he has a career at Canes uh, based on that TikTok video. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's going to be Bennett and Bennett Law Firm in about four years. But yeah, um, Stets, Canes could Stetson work out. And, Stetson and Bennett Law yeah. Firm. <laughs> um, he's probably. I mean, he's going to be what, like a sixth year senior? He'll be. I think he's. I think he's going to be twenty four. 
Okay. He's going to turn wow. 24. <laughs> He'll be 24 years old playing. Uh, I was in Athens till I was 24. That was too long. Yeah. But I wasn't on the football team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah. I was ready to move on, do something else at that point. But. And, and I get that. I, I know, I mean, we love the dogs. We love college football. But I think everyone it would be naive to say or naive to overlook that eventually – playing football and being on the team and being in college town for so long is like, all right, you know, there is, while, while it's big and it, and it's exciting, he's been doing it for quite a while and mm-hmm. it's not professional. He's not necessarily getting paid to do that. No, the NIL changes things, but, um, there's probably a little bit of, all right, you know, one more run, let's do it. And then let's, let's move on. Cause I mean, when you're 24 years old and the new kids coming in are 18, you know, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, some of these early enrollees that we're recruiting are missing prom to come hang out with Stetson Bennett and get catch passes and whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a, we're going to have a fun year next year. I mean, really, I think to sum up who the team is going to be, we're going to have this weird dichotomy of uh, fringe talent guys who obviously didn't leave to go to the NFL because they either didn't have a high enough draft status or maybe just potentially aren't going to make it like Stetson or Tyke or Chris Smith, we'll see. So you have this weird uh, older experienced leadership with this very young, not just young, but very young, talented, extremely athletic uh, recruits that we've, you know, that, that are well documented in our recruiting rankings. So it's going to be, I think, which I think is a good mix. You have a lot of heady, older leadership that obviously went to the mountain, top of the mountain this year in the championship, and a lot yep. of guys hungry <clears throat> that want to be a part of that and carry that on for themselves. So it's going mean, to be a very fun mix. It'll of, be cool. It's like Kirby makes the big bucks to bring the young guys along like that and figure out how to use everybody. I also want to see JT Daniels to Ole Miss because give me the JT and Lane Kiffin memes all season long. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. And I think yeah. he'd light it up out there. I'd like to see him do well. He was very, I would too. very uh, classy, very professional absolutely. in the way he handled himself the whole thing. So yep, JT, well, we know you listen. Wish you the best. Thank you for your time in Athens. Yeah. I saw you a couple times downtown. I know you enjoyed yourself very much. So... <laughs> Glad we could host. <laughs> yeah. Was he like a Rum Runners guy? Uh, hey, I saw him at Silver Dollar. Silver Dollar. Yeah. Of course, is at Silver Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've, we've got a lot to talk about in our coming runners. episodes. Um, obviously, looking ahead to the season to come and recruiting and all of that. Um, yeah. But just to wrap things up, I mean, to end a 41 year drought, uh-huh. um, finally knocking off Alabama to do it, coming back twice, Kirby beating Saban uh, and. Stetson Bennett and the story that he has. I mean, it was truly a storybook year for the George Bulldogs. <coughs> for the George Bulldogs. Well, it's getting emotional over here. Yeah. How can I you not? Told myself I wasn't told myself I wasn't gonna cry. Oh, I cried. Um, I definitely cried. <laughs> so again, congratulations to the national champions, George Bulldogs. Uh that's gonna do it for us on this episode. Be sure to tune in uh next week as we break down uh what's to come for the dogs. But until then. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, cyberbully that uh, like button, and we'll see you guys soon. All right. Go Go dogs. Go dogs.